Today's Skull and Bones video is all about the best ship build for endgame. I'm going to go over the ships, the weapons, the furniture, how and why, the armor, and the food buffs, everything. We're going to talk about it and why it's the best and how to utilize it and how to get it. Let's get into it. Let's go. Let's start with the best ship and why. And this death mark expired thing is just going to keep popping up. So the Bridgetine is the overall best ship currently in the game as far as season one goes. And here is why. It is the fastest ship. It has four gun ports on its sides you don't have to worry about uh, if you use a colvern yes it has eight but the colvern is a is a lower dps i'll show more about that later in the video but for now the bridgetine is the king of kings because it is the fastest ship it has a decent amount of health it's not a tank it's a dps ship it has a, a perk where you ram which is uh, somewhat useful sometimes not really all that useful but uh, a lot of people want to argue oh no it's the sandbook the sandbook is the best dps ship because of the fire Fire in this game sucks for PvP. Fire in this game sucks for generalized PvE as well. It is a DPS loss to use fire. The only time you ever use a fire ship is in a group setting. Think of it like this. If you've played other MMORPGs, you have like a Warlock or a, a Shadow Priest in World of Warcraft, or you have some sort of damage over time debuffer in your raid party. And that's what the Sandbuck is. It is a it is a debuffer ship. It is not a DPS ship. It is not a solo ship. This is purely meant for group play and should be avoided. And then you're like, well, what about the snow? The snow is a tanky ship. And okay, here's the thing, right? Yes, it's a tanky ship. However, in PvP, the meta is uh, if you are doing helm uh, wagers, people just camp the point and then they just kill you with crew attacks, which bracing does not save you from. And also, the snow is way slower. It It's useless in, in PvE, generalized PvE. There's no reason to use this over the Bridgetine. It's just a worse off ship. So the Bridgetine is the best ship. Now let's talk about how to get the Bridgetine. Now if you are brand new, the path that I want you to follow is the following. So on in my description scroll down and then find this video here it's called skull and bones the best possible star for new players best weapon ship upgrades and resources the thumbnail looks like this in all of my videos you can open the description scroll down and it will be uh right here in the guides the best possible start for new players now in five hours you will be level eight and you will have the second best ship in the game and on your first or second day, depending on how much of a hardcore gamer you are, how much you play, you'll be able to get the Bridgetine. But how do you get the Bridgetine? How do you craft it? Where, where do you craft it? I'm going to show you how to figure that out. So, when you are in the game world, push Ilm to open your map. I don't know what it is on controller. And then go to Knowledge here at the top. And then click Codex. And then clip uh, or scroll down and or just find ships. Then click the Bridgetine. And you can track this. For me, it's Spacebar. You can track it. And it will track all of these ingredients and where they're at. These are very easy to get ingredients. The hardest thing possibly to get would be the Terosian Springs, which you have to either kill elite ships. If you just do the main story missions, you're going to have like 10 of these. So by the time you finish the main story in about 7, 8 hours or, you know, 10 or 12 if you're casual, uh, then you will have the ingredients for the ship. You're going to have everything listed here just by playing the main story. It's really easy to get. The game will even tell you where to get the... Uh, uh, what is it? The blueprint, which is only like 5,000 silver, and that's not a lot of silver in this game. So it's very easy to get. Now let's talk about the best weapons and why. So if I go to my ship loadout, I'm going to show you right now. I'm going to go to manage ship and go to weapons. On all three, your front, your left, and your right side, you're going to want the Dardanelles gun. Now, here's the problem with the Dardanelles gun. Not only is it quite a big grind to get for casuals, uh, it took me about 20 hours a day, uh, you know, 20 hours to get one cannon, 20 hours to get another cannon, and so on and so forth. It gets easier as you grind, but, you know, at the start, it, it is a grind. This is a 20% DPS increase over the Fire Bombard 3, but the problem with it is that you need to be, you need to have good aim. And if you play this game for at least a week, you're gonna, you're gonna nail the aim down, you're gonna learn some muscle memory, you're gonna be able to hit your targets. But, uh, the Fire Bombard 3 is... They're, again, they're 20% worse, but they're still good enough. And the Fire Bombard 3s, once you hit Kingpin, you'll get these from the chest rewards. You could craft them, but I just ended up getting a bunch through the chest rewards. As you level up your Kingpin, every time you level up, you will get a chest in the mail. And I don't know how they're mailing chests back in the 1600s, I'll tell you what. But 
Uh, they <laughs> video game logic. They uh, these things are just as good. So put them in the front, the left, and the right side. And then on the back, you can use whatever you want. Uh, but I, you know, I would just put another Dardanelles cannon. I don't have one, so I just have a Fire Bombard three. But you can put whatever you want on the back. It is your personal taste. Generally, what you'll do is you'll fire your fronts and then fire your left or your rights. And then you're just going to swivel and dance, you know, back and forth. If you're running away, it's the same thing, but, you know, with the backside. And that's all it is. So, what about Auxiliary? So, uh, starting off, you will get a Mortar 3, hopefully, from your random chest drop in the Kingpin, you know, as you level Kingpin. This one's good enough. It's very, it's really good. It's actually preferred if you're doing Sieges. But for PvP and killing ships, the best overall is the Leopold 3. So what is the Leopold 3? It, it deals flooding damage, and the way it works is it shoots a mortar over the top of the enemy ships, and then it explodes and rains down shrapnel. It's pretty cool looking. You've probably seen it happen to you from PvE. Like, a lot of the enemy towers use this weapon, and uh, it's just it's just slightly more damage. It's really not that much more, but it, it's just nice to have. And uh, overall, this is going to be your main weapon for PvE and PvP. Uh, also, if you want to know the stats of the Dardanelles gun, it fires all the weapons at once. I have a whole video on this. I have an entire video on this. This video right here will show you all the DPS tests for the weapons. You can scroll down here, and it is um, right down here under tips and tricks in the description. DPS test highest DPS weapon. So click that link. This is the thumbnail. Go check it out. Next up is the best armor, and this is for specifically PvE. And... You may think it's the Black Prince or the Ouroboros. No, it is the Royal Custodian. I'm going to tell you why. Out of all of the enemy PvE, you know, AI attacks in the entire game, the biggest damage type is piercing. That is what you will mostly be attacked with by enemy towers and ships. The next highest damage is the explosive. Now, not only do piercing and explosive deal far, far more damage from the enemies in this game than any other source, this also gives you flooding and fire protection a little bit. But the enemies that do flood damage, there's the monster, there's a few, like, world bosses. The flood damage is very negligible, it's very small, it's just an annoying damage over time, which you have a consumable to heal this with. So, any armor that has flood protection or focuses on flood protection is the worst in slot in the whole game. Fire, there are a few bosses that use fire damage, but luckily for us, including the ghost ship... Fire damage sucks in this game. Fire damage is just a debuff. It's a way to tear your sails a little bit easier. Fire damage is laughable. It sucks. It's n You're not going to die to fire damage in this game. Whereas, you know, a mortar exploding over you, which is the majority of how players die in PvE, is the highest possible damage. Okay, this is the highest possible damage. Tearing already has a 75% damage negation if they attack your sails over your body. So, increasing that even more is kind of stupid. But, uh, because the majority of enemies use piercing and explosive, that's all you need. And the Royal Custodian, to get this, you just go to any world boss, it's a random drop. I have a whole bunch of them. What you can do is, if you have friends or you join, like, some sort of Discord or maybe a forum, you can just ask a higher level player to give you a Royal Custodian for free. I have a bunch here just to give out, that's why I'm kind of keeping them. And we're going to talk about the other armors, and also I want to talk about the Royal Custodian's ability, it's called Refortify. Applies the Fortified effect for 12 seconds after using a repair kit, and it says it increases armor by 35%. I want to tell you that this is false. This works better than advertised, and I'm going to explain that. Let's say that you get hit by a mortar, an explosive mortar, and it takes half your HP away. Now, if you have Refortify active, you would think armor by 35%. So you take your 1,150 armor, you add 35%, and that's your new armor value. That's not what it technically does. This thing halves the damage that you take, at least in PvE. I haven't tried it in PvP, but essentially, if you pop a repair kit, and then you get hit by a mortar, you're taking half the total damage of that mortar... When this buff is active, I don't think I don't think they program this right. Uh, that's why I always trust but verify in these games. And then I want to talk just real quick. If you're using Royal Custodian, the I, the repair kit that is the most efficient in the game, believe it or not, is the repair kit one. Now this only heals six thousand HP. However, it's a twenty second cooldown, and for thirteen seconds after using it, you have that buff. So you only don't have the buff for seven seconds, and uh, you know per minute that's. You, you have the buff, like, two-thirds of the, every minute. Two-thirds of the time, you will be buffed. So this is the best repair kit when you use that armor for PvE. 
Before we talk about the best armor for PvP, I just have to mention how to earn Sovereigns, because you, uh, you could find this as a random drop, but to earn Sovereigns, later in the game, you're going to be farming these pieces of eight, this little octopus coin, and as you farm octopus coins, you're going to rise up in the ranks. Also, every day I wake up, I'm ranked 2,000, I, I climb down to 1,500, and then the next day I'm back up to 2,200. I just, uh, I guess this is just my place. Anyway, so... <laughs> What you're going to do is you're going to farm these pieces of eight. You can see that so far I have farmed 30,000 pieces of eight, putting me into the silver category. Once I farm 40,000, I'll earn 600 sovereigns. And if I earn 60,000, I'll earn 700 sovereigns. And so you're going to use these sovereigns to acquire what's called the Black Prince. So in St. Anne, you're going to go uh, to the bar, which if you've played through the story, you know where this is. And you're going to talk to this crazy-eyed lady here, the barkeeper lady, uh, Yanita Nara. Yanita, she's got a little cat in the background. That's gross. I don't want a cat in a bar. Anyway, so you go to the black market, and then you scroll down, and the armor is all the way at the bottom, and it's right here. The black prince. I'm going to go ahead and purchase it now. There we go. Now, here's why this is the best PvP armor in the game. The, major the vast majority of players... Almost all of them who are solo, not, not groups. You're going to die to groups no matter what. No armor will save you. The mass, mass majority of solo PvP players will be using Bombards. That's the meta. And this armor protects more from mortars and Bombard cannons than any other armor in the game. It also has a high armor value. And it protects against piercing. The fire defense, who cares? If they use fire Bombards, that helps. But it's not really noticeable. But the... The reason why this is the PvP meta armor and not the Ouroboros is because of Resolute. This reduces damage taken by 50% when whole health is less than 33%. So here is how PvP works in the end game in the high PvP meta against actually skilled players. So right now there's someone on my map doing a Helm Wager. Maybe. Yeah, this guy. So what happens? So this guy has probably got to deliver right here. So what happens is everyone zones in right here. And he is forced to either not be hit for like 10 seconds or kill everybody. But what happens is everyone switches to a PvP loadout where you just do crew attacks on the enemy and you stun lock them. There is no way to mitigate the crew damage attack other than the Black Prince. The Black Prince is the only armor in the entire game that mitigates the crew attack damage. So that's why it's the best PvP. Now, the Ouroboros does has its place. It is not in PvE. It is not in PvP. It is in raiding. If you are doing forts, if you have friends, that one that's a tank and one that's a healer, everyone should be running this armor if possible. And here is why. It has the biggest spread of damage mitigation uh, for things that the enemies use, except for piercing, but you can generally heal through piercing. Uh, but here's the thing. The ability is every time you brace... You heal 15% of your max HP. This means that your healers can self-heal, your tanks can heal, and there's the tanks have many other ways to self-heal, especially if they're spamming crew attacks. That's another thing. And everyone essentially stacks self-sustain. Like, p raids are not about DPS races. It is not a DPS race. There is no enrage timer. It is about not dying to the hordes and the waves and the towers and the, and the zergs and the mortars and the spam. That's all raiding is in this game. And uh, also, uh, having restoration means that all the flood damage that you will be taking in these raid encounters, just, you don't have to worry about it. It's just healing on top of healing. So, the way this works is to get Ouroboros, you have to go and kill the monster creature, which you can do once per day unless you have friends in server hop or get lucky and find someone doing the monster. And you get two teeth, and you need 52 teeth total. 50 for the blueprint and two to craft the armor. So it's going to take you about a month. Now, in Season 1, there will be more monsters to hunt, and I'm not some sort of insider, I don't have insider info, but I've looked at all of the Season 1 trailers, and they're, they all feature giant crocodiles. So, obviously, those are monsters, and you get their teeth. Duh. So, just wait until Season 1 starts to farm this if you want. Otherwise, make a bunch of friends, get into a Discord, and do an organized teeth hunt. Or just pay for it. There's people out there, you know, RMTing uh, for teeth. So, there you go. But, uh, essentially, the reason why this is the best raid is, again, the abilities and no other real reason.
Now, I'm going to cover the best furniture, the all-around version. You, there's a lot of different furniture swaps you can do, but this one is generally good in all situations until they nerf it. And I'm going to tell you why, what it is and why, and most of these you can just get by playing the main story. There is one or two you have to craft, and I'll show you how to do that. So, the first one is the rope locker. So, the rope locker is what you start the game with, and here is why. It increases your acceleration to 300% when you activate trim when you have full stamina. So the way this works, this is kind of like your sprint. This is your, oh no, there's a mortar under me, WWW, or forward, forward, forward on controller, and then you just speed out of the mortar blast zone. Also, in PvE, the towers, the enemy ships, the AI, have a lot of trouble tracking and landing their shots when you have higher acceleration than standard amounts. So the rope locker is absolutely key in almost all situations except for the helm crap, the helm PvP crap, uh, because you need to be running around at max speed, you need to be able to chase players, you need to be able to run away from players, you need to be able to chase ships and run away from ships. Uh, in the high seas when you're doing raids, you need to be as fast as possible to close the distance, especially when there's waves and crap pushing you all over the place. This is best in slot. So next up is the Leather Rope Grips one. This reduces your stamina depletion when trimming cells by 15%. Now, unless you want to chew on monster food for stamina, this is required to have infinite stamina. Alright? Infinite stamina is nice. So you're going to be just eating basic grilled food. I'll cover food later in the video, but with the Leather Rope Grips one, this reduces the stamina depletion by enough so you can sustain indefinitely. Next up is, because you're using all bombards, you're going to want more elemental damage. And you may be thinking, but, 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 but the, the Dardanelles doesn't do elemental damage. And while that is correct, this still boosts the damage. So, there is a chance this gets patched. But right now, this is a 19% DPS increase on all of your cannons, not just, uh, port side, uh, starboard side, dude. Like, yeah, this is just a better choice. Next up, you have the Bombard Projectile Speed. So this is 15% increased projectile speed. This is a whole second difference of landing your shots. If you learn the game, if you spend a long time without this, maybe it's not best to put this on. However, if you fight yourself, if you were to clone yourself and have a shadow fight, like a, a mirror match, and you have this and your opponent does not, you win the fight. So this is necessary. Finally, the last one is... Uh, Lightened Mast 1, this increases your acceleration, and even when you aren't using the rope ladder, this is still necessary to trick and fool the AI into missing and mistiming their shots and improperly aiming. This is also required to run away from enemy players. This is required in everything except camping uh, for <laughs> the, uh, the Helm Wagers. Now, obviously, if you're doing a raid or you're doing Helm Wagers, there's a bit different furnitures, for instance... If you're DPS in your raid, then you want Signal Gong. If you're the tank, you want Iron Capstan, etc. There's a, there's a whole lot of choices. You're going to have to figure that out yourself. I, I could spend all day on furniture, but let's move on. So while not really best in slots, uh, I just want to talk about fireworks real quick and uh, its uses. So besides a silly greeting since we can't talk in the game right now, fireworks are used to signal to healers in raids, hey, I need healing, so you pop your fireworks. The healer, you know, runs over and then he heals you. Uh, also, in PvP, it can be a little distracting to some players, so um, I just want to talk about it. Now, food and consumables, obviously the best in slot foods are the monster meats and stuff like that, but that's overkill and it's unnecessary. All you need is a basic grilled banana, grilled coconut, grilled durian, grilled fish, grilled screw pine. You don't, don't grill the, like, the crocodiles and stuff. Those are way too annoying to farm, okay? You're going to have thousands of, of, of the basic foods and fruits. Fish, probably not unless you're doing my, my silver farm video. But uh, you're going to have, like, like look at this. I have a thousand coconuts. I have a thousand durians. You're just going to get these as you play. So that's all you need. Just grill them up, and then that's your stamina food. Easy peasy. Now, the other foods, like, you don't need to, like, worry about buying ingredients and cooking food. That's stupid. Almost every ship you kill after level 10 will have food on them. You're just going to have a bunch of random foods. So here's the best way to do it, right? Now, obviously, there's best in slot food. It's the monster meats and stuff. But all you need to do is, are you doing PvE and sailing around collecting coins? Hey, this has a sail icon. Eat that. It doesn't matter if it's good or bad. 
Um, are you a are you a tank and a raid? Eat the one with the shield. Are you a deep? Are you doing crew stuff with the helm? Eat the one with the little cross swords. It, it's really really simple. Like uh, almost any food will sustain you indefinitely. Just anything that restores stamina regeneration, any anything that reduces trim crew stamina consumption is completely fine. Like if you it, when I when I take a video I, and I've done this, I filmed a video with the crappy food and then the sate the sate cam being which is the better food, and then I sail the same direction. The, the the difference on the stamina bar is like it's like a little a millimeter it's so tiny it's unnoticeable so yes there is a best in slot food and yes you could be min maxing it but you don't need to it's a millimeter on your it's a millimeter's worth of stamina bar it makes no difference you're not going to suddenly lose a pvp match you're not going to lose you know and die because you didn't use the best food now there's one other thing too i want to talk about and that is water and here's the thing with the water, okay? Uh, so you have the water barrels and you have the water flasks. One is 10% and one is 15%. They both last 20 seconds. So uh, when I am in the fastest ship and I'm sailing with the wind at my back, I can go about 18, 19 knots. When I pop the water flask, I can go 20 to 21. And whenever I pop the water barrel, I can go about 21, sometimes maybe 22. Now... There, there's something I've been experimenting with called slingshotting, and it, it, it might be an exploit. I don't know yet, but essentially, I've only been, been able to do it a few times, but while sailing around, these little baby islands you can, like, wedge your ship onto, boost forward with the rope ladder, drink a water barrel, and then, and then, tr and then angle into the island, and then when you angle out of the island, you will just, like, pew, you'll just go, like, 30, 40 knots in a direction for a little while, and then you'll go back to normal speed. And uh, I don't know if that's an exploit, but the water barrels and the water flasks allow you to do that. Again, that could be a bug. I don't know. But don't fret and don't, you know, whinge about having water or not. If you're if you're doing the uh, cargo hunt, which is, I think, yeah, this guy's doing the cargo hunt. So I would definitely want water barrels to chase this guy down, right? Uh, and he would want water barrels to run away because if I have water and stamina food and he does not, I will always be able to be shooting at him simple as and i could just work like i could teleport right here or yeah the, the only way i can catch that guy right now is if i teleport right over here and then swim around this direction and meet him head on that's the only way i'm catching this dude because again he's in the brigantine he's already in the fastest ship if he's popping water and stamina food then there's no catching him there's no following him eventually as i shoot and angle my ship around he will be able to just run away from me so food it's not the most important thing and i just want to cover it though Finally, the best silver makers in the game are Brandy and Jin, and these are what you should be using whenever, or farming rather, whenever you need to make silver. There's a whole bunch of crap online that's like, oh yeah, just level up your helm, and then craft all the best golden gins and wines, and then sell it to the, the captains. No, that's stupid, that's a waste of time, that's a, that is not efficient. I have a video that explains how to have infinite money. Here is that video, it's called Skull and Bones, The Best Way to Make Silver, pretty generic title, but if you scroll down here to uh, Guides, it's right here, Best Way to Make Silver, click that link, and this is not an exploit, this is not bannable, this is not going to be patched, okay, this is just part of the game, and this will explain how to farm brandy and gin, as well as wine and paintings, because... You know, more money equals faster money. This is the fastest way to get silver in the game. You will never have silver problems. You can buy every cosmetic, every, like, every time your helm needs, you know, updating here. If I just go to the math, there's probably, there's at least probably one. Nope, okay, they're all full. I gotta collect the coins. But, uh, you know, this is the biggest silver sink in the game, is just paying these things to stay in operation. And, uh, like, right now I'm at 700,000 silver. Well, if I spend one hour, I'll be at, like, 2 million, okay? I, I can just, or I'm sorry, yeah, yeah, more than 2 million silver. Easy. So, I want to talk about the best pieces of 8 farm. It used to be the order registry by maxing out all those upgrades. You could really pump these numbers, but that's been nerfed. That is no longer the case. All the top players that were doing that are starting to fall off the, the leaderboard rankings now. The actual best way is, it's, it's a little confusing, but I'm going to try to explain it. And unfortunately, it's not something that I did, but it's something that I will do in the future. And um, what it is, is that there's little quadrants here. So you, you can see, like, there's, like, a chunk right here. There's a chunk right here, chunk right here, and chunk right here, up here. So what you want to do, and this is what the top players are doing. There's two of them. So south, 
South of St. Anne, there is Guerinade and then Fond Royale. And so these are the only two that you want to upgrade. You want to capture the whole zone. Okay, let me let me explain. Y you want to capture everything on the map except one. And you want that one to either be right here, or you want that one to be right here-ish. But this this is the best overall PvP trap. I'm going to talk about this. Uh, I'm going to make a separate video on this whole subject, but I'm going to include it in this one since you've watched this far. So... By upgrading just these two buildings and then feeding them the resources, you will ha also be maxing out the trade route upgrades for these two. And while my whole map is like level 4 and level 5, um, if you level these things up to like 10, it's it's better than having the whole map be 5. It's It, it gets ridiculous how it scales. And then by because this whole zone will be upgraded, and then these trade routes, when you upgrade those through the upgrades uh, thing up here... You can get thousands and thousands, like, in, in like, 20, 30 minutes. It's ridiculous how much you can do. So, from now on, I'm not upgrading the whole map. I'm just going to be pumping these two as hard as possible, and I'll make a video about that in the future at some point. Now, let's go about the reason why you don't ever want to capture either this one right down here in the middle of the river, which is the, the Sad Joa Foundry, or this one up here, which is the uh, Tambi Foundry. You don't want to ever claim those, and the reason why is because when you are doing a hostile takeover, you can attack any ship even if they are not part of the hostile takeover event. This is to prevent griefing, so when you're doing a hostile takeover, it's basically a plunder mission, but you have to fight other players over who gets to uh, progress and who gets to claim the fort. So what you do is you sit here during a hostile takeover, which is, if this is the only building you have not captured, every 20 minutes there will be a hostile takeover. And you sit there, and other players that come in to collect their coins, you kill them and take their coins. And then before the hostile takeover completes, you just leave the game. Or you just zone out of it and you don't complete it. And what this opens up is this is your AFK spot, and when other ships come by, you can kill them, they cannot hurt you, and you can take their coins and their items. And so it's a free farm, and the reason you're doing it in a river is so that they can't flee. Because once you've started crippling them with a flame build or that silly build where you just constantly crew attack, and a crew attack locks you down. A crew attack won't let you move, act, shoot back, or defend, or, or pop heals during the crew attack. And you can stun lock someone and take all of their stuff and all of their coins. And that's what the highest rank number one players are currently doing. And they're probably using their friends to do it. So that's, a, that's another thing too. But um, that is the best possible way to farm pieces of eight. Which also means it's the best possible way to farm the uh, sovereigns. But these become pretty useless at least right now. There's not a lot to buy with them. I'm going to just go real quick because this is going to be a whole separate video topic. It's really not about ships. But the best upgrades for the helm... This very first column, just blow it out and get buy them all. And then on the last column, buy them all as well. That's it. And then if you want, uh, just to, you know, you can work on this first column here. But that would be, you know, save that for last. Save that for, you know, this is the very last thing that you want to, like, traverse down. And then if you're doing the other colonies, of course, you would go over to these next three. But there's no reason to really touch those because uh, just having one area is more than enough uh, for your free time. Now, I want to talk about ammo, because at some point, you're going to have ammo problems if you play enough. And uh, even if you go here to Dutchman's Camp, and you're, you're doing the silver method, and you're buying ammo every time, it's not enough. So, the two best places to farm ammo in the game are, right over here in the open seas in the northeast part of the map, uh, there is, what is this? This is the Return Fleet Bite. I don't know why it's called Bite. But um, right up here, northeast of that, there's this long island, and you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and then you curve around seven, eight shipwrecks. So you clean that out, you log out, you log back in, you clean it out, log out, log back in, clean it out. That's the best ammo route farm in the whole game right there. And if that's because my videos get very popular, and so everyone does it. So if that is being cleaned out, the next best thing is you go down to the southwest, down here to Great U U U Ucuda. And then you just sail along the river, and then there's there's ship there's plenty of shipwrecks here to also farm. And uh, the cool thing is you can sail in the middle of the river, and you can get both sides. So this is the next best farm. It's not as good as that one I just showed you. But if you're having ammo issues, that is how you get parts for ammo.
And that is the video, lads. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. I have no life and no social life. I read every single comment, so let me know. And I might help you out if I did not answer it already in the video. With that said, leave a like as well. It takes a few seconds. And finally, 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 on the right side of your screen, right now, there's a video that you should absolutely click. And if you don't click it, in the next two days, you're going to wake up with a sore throat, but about midway through your day, it'll magically go away, and you're gonna know that, well, while you didn't get sick, that sore throat is because you didn't click that video. So click it right now, or it'll happen to you.